will not only build the biggest business we've ever seen by many, many multiples, but it's going to be also the biggest product launch we've ever had. Uh, you're basically building like synthetic humans that are going out and just doing human-like work. As the race to deploy AI-powered humanoid robots at scale heats up, the perceived leaders in the market are getting increasingly bold in their claims. We want human-level androids. They have to have strength, human-level strength, speed, and you know, range of motion. As companies like Figure and Clone Robotics race to bring their fake humans to market, the pace of change is raising alarms even within the industry. We don't see much focus on safety in the humanoid industry right now. Amid an international technological arms race, few can predict what the rapid advancements in hardware and artificial intelligence will manifest into. But comedian Whitney Cummings, who's had her own robotic replica at home for years, warns of weird days ahead. So I, I of course, worry about the robots are going to do, but I also worry about what humans are going to do to each other trying to protect robots. The founder of the well-funded robotic startup figure downplayed the difficulty of building humanoid robots at scale in a new interview with Bloomberg. Like one thing I've realized over the last like few years is we're not like we're not doing car manufacturing. This is traditional consumer electronics manufacturing, and that process is probably several orders of magnitude e easier. I don't want to give the impression that manufacturing is going to be easy in any way. I really, have spent the last like year trying to understand it much better, and I feel. Um, much more higher, I feel higher confidence that we can like actually deliver like significant volumes over time. The comment goes against the grain as other perceived leaders in the market, including Elon Musk, have categorized humanoids as incredibly complex to get to production. Founded in 2022, Figure aims to build 100,000 AI-powered humanoid robots in the next four years. The interview took place during Bloomberg's Tech Summit in San Francisco. Several other robotics firms showcased their technologies during the event, including Agility Robotics. The Oregon-based firm's CEO, Peggy Johnson, said safety is a priority for Agility as it pushes toward mass deployment of its humanoids. But we don't see much focus on safety in the humanoid industry right now. Um, we're actually working with the U.S. government to help write the humanoid regulatory requirements. Um, we feel very, very strongly about safety, and that is the bar that has to be met. But when that's met, I mean, the sky's the limit. Well, do you work? Adcock has a different view. We have a, um, we have a data problem and a robot problem. As you put more robots out to, to the world that can do something useful that people will pay you for, the cost of that robot like, per output of work will come down because you'll just make more of them. You'll have like, you'll be up on the experience curve of manufacturing. Bloomberg's Ed Ludlow noted that Figure did not bring robots to the demo. Brett, you didn't bring a robot. <laughs> that kind of goes back to our whole philosophy around we don't go to a lot of events. I think it's a giant waste of time, to be frank. I have to bring a team here, I have to bring robots here. They could be at the office, they could be learning autonomy. I mean... He didn't confirm, but also didn't push back when asked about reporting that figure is raising one and a half billion dollars for a $40 billion valuation. Adcock insisted figures robots operate in commercial settings with no humans in the loop. Figure says it has two paying customers. BMW, which has deployed several robots at its plant in Spartanburg, South Carolina, and an unnamed logistics company. Adcock wouldn't confirm previous reports that the second customer is UPS. He also wouldn't comment on whether Figure is involved with Amazon's initiative to train humanoid robots to deliver packages to doorsteps. The information reported earlier this week that Amazon is testing robots from Agility and the Chinese company Unitree Robotics. Figure robots use a single neural network to control tasks from just camera input. Individual robots can share what they learn with their whole fleet, like an AI robot hive mind. He said they do use teleoperation for data collection, but stressed that none of that happens in real-world deployments. Another well-funded startup, 1X Technologies, plans to use teleoperators as a stand-in for autonomy when needed during early home deployments. 1X has begun testing its Neo Gamma humanoids at a limited number of homes. Figure is developing its next-generation humanoid called the Figure 3 for high-rate manufacturing. I think it's probably pretty obvious to the world. I think Figure is perhaps shown the best real 
world progress in both AI and human and robotics globally. Meanwhile, another startup that's captured global attention with its Westworld-like synthetic human says it's blazing ahead of its more well-funded competitors. In an interview with Ilir Aliu from the European Deep Tech Group 22 Astronauts, Clone Robotics co-founder Danish Radhakrishnan said the industry is still catching up to what it achieved years ago. Uh, my, my sense is that uh, Clone is still pushing something here that it is very valuable, that's going to lock a ton of customer value that, that other companies are going to struggle to unlock. That is, that is already, Clone has already solved, frankly, hardware problems that I'd argue everybody else in the industry is still like, you know, trying to like desperately figure out how to solve today that we solved like, you know, in the, within the first 18 months of the company. He categorized it as a foundational breakthrough that sets it apart from perceived leaders in humanoid robotics like One X and Tesla. Um, today, you can really see this. It's become more apparent today than I think ever that all of the other humanoid morphologies are essentially converging to a single design, um, while uh, well, Clone still stands apart from the rest of the industry. Radha Krishnan launched Clone Robotics with Polish robotics engineer Lukas Kozlik in 2021. He moved to Poland after meeting his business partner on YouTube in 2020. Clone now has almost 50 employees and plans to soon open an office in the Bay Area to push AI training on their androids. The startup introduced its synthetic human prototype called the Protoclone earlier this year. The android boasts more than 200 degrees of freedom, a thousand myofibers, and 500 sensors. The founders raised $6 million in seed funding from initialized capital in 2023. The startup is going against the grain with its self-developed hydraulic and pneumatic actuation systems. The founder said Clone will release a new demo soon. I am obsessed with robots. Okay. Lately. Uh, I, I, they're taking over. I... Vilmar made a point of booking comedian Whitney Cummings on his HBO show, Real Time, because of her well-documented experience with robotics. Back in 2019, she collaborated with the Las Vegas company Realbotics to develop a lifelike clone of herself. The robot, named Bear Claw, appeared prominently in the stand-up comics Netflix special from that year. She still has the fembot to this day. I'll tell you what I'm really worried about with the robots is that we will anthropomorphize them and start to have compassion. It's fascinating because, you know, I'm one of those people when you see a Roomba get like stuck under the couch, you're like, oh, buddy. They have this robot and everyone's like, where is she? I'm like, I would love to throw her away, but I can't. You see a face and I, even when I leave the room, I'll like, do you want me to leave the TV on? Like, I feel bad. It's like, of course, worry about the robots are going to do, but I also worry about what humans are going to do to each other trying to protect robots that they've projected onto. Technology has advanced significantly since the robot's debut. In early 2025, Realbotics launched its proprietary robotic AI vision system, which includes features like facial recognition, object tracking, and real-time situation detection. The company has also integrated third-party large language models like ChatGPT, Meta's Llama, and Google's Gemini. Realbotics reported a 166% increase in revenue, totaling $761,000 during the second quarter of 2025. Its Androids sell for between $20,000 for a bust and $175,000 for a full-bodied variant. The company is gearing its hyper-realistic humanoids toward roles like customer service and event marketing. The success Realbotics is experiencing today is just the latest in a decades-long journey that began in the hidden corners of the internet. For more on that, check the related video.